Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Lexus Guildford, I'm bringing you in-depth tour of a 2017 Lexus LC500 Hybrid presented here in Naples Yellow. Debuted in 2012, the LC models mark the beginning of a new chapter known as Global Architecture Luxury in Lexus design and engineering. The brand has branched back into the luxury GT space and developed new approaches and technology in the process. Its muzzle designation of LC stands for Lexus Challenge and was denoted by Head of Engineering after the car proved to be quite a challenge to bring to fruition, both in terms of engineering and design. It won't be possible to get much closer to a road-going production-level concept car than the LC. You will find out more about these challenges throughout the video. There are two LC500 variants, a 5-litre petrol V8 and this 3.5-litre petrol V6 hybrid. The 3.5-litre V6 hybrid produces 355 horsepower, with the engine alone providing 295 brake horsepower. This output has been tested independently to achieve a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of under 5 seconds and a limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. In terms of the electrical unit, Lexus have moved away from their nickel hydride batteries in previous cars and have opted for the more potent lithium ion. Why? Lithium-ion batteries can be charged and discharged faster, resulting in less charging time and rapid energy conversion to power. At the rear, the exhaust is fitted with an exhaust gas-regulated valve that opens at higher speeds to provide a more formidable sound. Let's hear how the V8 sounds. This car sits on the optional 21-inch forged alloy wheels with run-flat tyres. 20-inch wheels are also available. Due to its sloping bonnet, new front suspension was required. The Lexus engineers developed double-joint multi-link suspension, which cuts down the necessary height of where suspension normally sits and can therefore overcome the low height of the bonnet. Stopping power here is provided by ventilated disc in the front and back. Let's now start the exterior tour from front to back. Lexus inverted L, wide grille design language, pervades through all of their models as also found here. There's a light complex around the radiator and cool air brake intake. LED day running lights run to the side and above, with the projected by xenon lights above. They use lenses to focus and amplify the beam. Moving up, the ridges on the sloping bonnet can be prominently seen and add to the sporty aesthetic of the car. As we roll over the side of the car, we find the dual colour wing mirrors with integrated side indicators. In the sport model here, there's a carbon reinforced polymer roof which creates a more sporty aesthetic and lowers the centre of gravity. Moving back down, we find the integrated door handles that pop out once the car is unlocked or can be manually pushed out. Under and slightly behind these are cool air intakes for the rear brakes. These are stylishly formed with the ovular design language which is seen elsewhere. And above and on the left side here, the petrol cap. As we move over the rear of the LC500, we find the rear wing. The rear wing can be manually lifted and returned using a switch inside or it will automatically lift at 50 miles an hour to increase rear downforce. As we move right over to the rear of the car, the first thing we find above the insignia is the reversing camera. On each side sits a 3D effect tail light, which are some of the slightest in the world and use mirrors to create the multi-light effect. Now we've finished the exterior tour, let's move inside. But first, let's take a look at the key. It's slim and embodies the same high quality build as the car. It offers controls for lock, unlock and to open the boot. As we go in to open the doors, we see that the branding extends to the door handles. Lexus Takumi Craftsman have worked tirelessly to create a more luxurious and airy feel than ever before, with inspiration and technology from the LFA. The aim has been to blend aesthetics with usability. For example, the steering wheel has been designed with an elliptical grip so to best suit the driver's hands while cornering, and on the passenger side there's also a handrail to grab hold of. There are interior specification presets, but any owner can customise their interior space. It features leather, alcantara and carbon fibre. There's no POV tour here, so I'll jump straight into the in-depth interior tour with the doors. Here, they're finished in black leather and alcantara. At the top, there's a small lock icon for the alarm, with an air vent further forward. At the edge of the door, there's carbon fibre reinforced polymer. This material is used throughout for rigidity and weight saving. Next is the alcantara strip, with sweeping lines and the aesthetically formed aluminium door release. At the bottom is a reasonable storage compartment with the armrest and seat memory controls above the exterior mirror, electric window and internal lock buttons. The seal area on the LC is neither low nor wide, but the car feels quite low to get into. 
Nevertheless, ingress and egress was smooth. The sill plate here is finished in gloss and matte carbon, showing the premium and performance feel of the LC. Moving into the car now, and we first find the bonnet release, followed by the petrol cap release, the buttons for the heads-up display and the boot, with further buttons above for the trip and cruise control, and finally the first air vent. The multifunctional wheel is upholstered in leather and comes with gear change paddles fitted behind. Before taking a closer look, I'll turn the ignition on. The keyless go system means all I have to do is depress the start start button to experience the almost galactic start screen sequence. Let's now return to the wheel. Buttons on the left of the wheel are for the trip menu, in addition to voice and volume controls. Buttons on the right are for cruise control and lane tracking. There are two driving mode stalks either side of the driver's display. The one on the left is to switch between driving modes, with the one on the right altering traction control settings. As we move down to the driver's display, we see that it switches. This technology is actually taken from the LFA. Here, there are several option screens. RSA, which can recognize traffic signs by utilizing the onboard camera, BSM or blind spot management, and information regarding the rear wing. In addition to vehicle settings, there's also meter settings, where language and units can be changed. EV mode can be turned on or off, with engine rev information, such as the indicator and peak, also available. At the touch of the button, the screen slides back where we can now access the general trip information, current MPG, remaining range, tyre pressure, gear position, current speed units, g-force, and rear wing position. A heads-up display or HUD can also be selected, which displays information for speed, gear, and direction of travel. We can now move more centrally into the interior space, and first find the main screen and analogue clock. The large central screen can be managed using the central touchpad, with simple scrolls to move to the desired options and then a double tap to select. There are also direct access buttons for radio, media, map and menu, with scrollers for radio seek and volume. Moving to the infotainment system, there are options for the sat-nav system, the DAB digital radio, Next is media with Bluetooth, auxiliary and USB connectivity. Talk functions are next, with apps after. These are bespoke applications that can be downloaded to suit each driver. Next is general car info, where power usage between the electrical motor, battery and combustion engine can be seen, as well as in-depth economy information regarding power usage and MPG. Before moving to the central column, I will show you the difference changing between driving modes makes to the display. There's Eco, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. These progressively alter the steering and powertrain responsiveness, providing a more sporty driving feel. Under the screen is another air vent, with the warning light button and start-stop to the right. Ventilation and air conditioning controls with digital displays are below these. The very slight and almost hidden away CD player sits at the bottom. This is part of the 13-speaker Mark Levinson HD surround sound system. Below this, there's a small bottle holder that can double up as a key or general storage compartment. The LC500s are fitted with the world's first 10-speed auto multi-stage transmission that offers seamless gear changes. It is managed through four main gears that have further steps, altogether equaling 10 steps. Sitting behind the gear selector are buttons for EV mode and to manually raise or lower the rear wing. Behind the gear lever and button arrays, the central armrest can slide back and open up to reveal two further bottle holders. In the rear storage compartment, the USB and AUX inputs can be found. Moving back up, there is a well-defined passenger zone with a central grip and multiple air vents with glass continuing above. 50 different seat designs were considered before finally deciding on the comfort and sport options available for the production cars. These seats are electrically adjustable and offered good support on my drive. To get into the rear, simply pull the lever and watch the seat power move forward. The rear space in the LC is my only major criticism. There's really no room for a full-grown adult, so think of this car as a 2 plus 2 type configuration. The 
the seats power slide back when returned to their original position. Let's now take a look at the car's remaining storage capacity. The glove compartment can be opened using the button on top. It offers a reasonable amount of storage. Moving outside, we can use the key or button on the driver's side to open the boot. Here in the hybrid, there's 172 litres of boot space, with 197 in the V8. Moving back inside briefly, we can take a quick look at the sun visors with their illuminated vanity mirrors and the Infinity style rear view mirror. So that concludes my in-depth tour of the 27 Lexus LC500 Hybrid. Thanks again to Lexus Guildford for affording me the opportunity. Please find all their contact details in the description below. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, cheers.